Hello and welcome to the fourth of your video tutorial modules for Final Cut Pro. In this module we're going to look more at some of the creative aspects. So we're going to look at visual enhancements, sound, generally mixing uh, levels, transitions and general effects, and then working with text uh, generators and themes, and also inserting logos and icons. So to the first, I've moved us back to um, to a medical study film that I made. Uh, particularly tricky job, mainly because there was UV lighting and a whole lot of <laughs> buzzing machinery. So from a light and sound perspective, it wasn't a great environment. Okay, we're just waiting for the machine to sort its life out. So here we go. Um, easiest way to do this is if I take you to Inspector, which is where visual enhancements will begin. Click on the clip, and here you see we're looking in video. Now, there was a color correction that I made. Let me show you what the footage originally looked like by just removing the color correction. So it was pretty dark, pretty miserable, uh, pretty Bulgarian medical institution. So the correction that I made Again, I'm just waiting for it to uh, catch up with me a little bit. Um, was made here. And all I've done is removed some of the shadow, taken up some of the midtones, and I might just up it a little bit, take it back down. And it really is, it's a, it's a bit of a feel thing, really. You can alter saturation, which again, I think I did. I took out some of the... Uh, uh, some of the color and generally, um, sorry, yeah, some of the color levels are the same. Saturation of color I removed a little bit. And yeah, that's it. What you can also do, if you wish, is mess about with some of the presets. One of the, thing about, one of the things about presets is that generally they optimize, excuse me, the setting. So... There's actually a little bit more quality in there if I use a preset. There's a little bit more quality than there would be if I was to do it manually. Right, I'm just, all right, so that is, um, that's how you would make visual enhancements. One other thing that you can do is you can select a clip, you can come here, match color, and then if you select another clip, your previous clip, will will sync to it and that can be done anywhere along the line yeah um, so matching color is quite a useful way of making sure that your footage is consistent but unfortunately there are some limitations with it it's not always um, it's not always accurate so you are still having to look uh, or you are still having to depend a lot on on the quality of your eye the second of the visual enhancements that we're going to look at is cropping, trimming, and something called Ken Burns. Now, I'm back at module, module one introduction because it's a, just a little bit more of a simpler, um, it's just a simpler visual to look at and work with. So we decide intro two in this, this is where we want to work. Again, select the clip and also bring the cursor over to it. This will then this will then ensure that you see what you're working on here in the visual. Simple thing, come down to the bottom left of the viewer. If you look at these icons here, we have transform. I'm not gonna go into transform too much, but through uh, sizes you can rotate. Just looking at this, there you go. You can do all manner of crazy business with that. Crop. Again, distort, same sort of thing. Distort will allow you to just bend it in and do crazy things like top of the pops type stuff. Okay, but this is a basic editing uh, program, so we're just going to focus on crop and distort. Okay, so you've selected your clip, you've got your, um, you've got the, the marker over the clip, and now we see this. I'm going to come to crop first. We'll come back to trim. Crop, as the name suggests, very simple. Now will be what shows in your clip when you run through it. Very straightforward. 
You'll agree. Ken Burns, apparently Ken Burns was a famous uh, documentary and filmmaker specializing in things like very, uh, very cool pans and focusing, uh, focus and zoom in. Things that we actually take pretty much for granted these days. Um, but Ken Burns was allegedly the pioneer of that. So just to show you, I'm moving a red box. As you can see, the green box is where the shot will start and you can select that by simply clicking it. And then the red box is where the shot will end. So my viewer has just moved over a little bit, as you can see, to here. Now, just to show you how this runs, I'm gonna come back to the start of this clip and I'm gonna play it for you so you can see. Okay, so we're taking a look at the general, uh, the general user interface for Final Cut Pro. It's possible that when you first open up uh, Final Cut Pro, you're going to be you're going to be looking at a screen that looks like this. So okay, can you see? Here, I'm just going to turn my clips I'm just going to turn my vocals down, which is something we'll look at in sound. As you can see, yeah, the footage is now zooming in and panning off to the right, and that is essentially Ken Burns. Okay, so we've done with that. I'm going to undo it. The third part. Okay, again in the clip. Clicking bottom left is trim. Now trim is a useful way of creating split screens. So as you can see, I've just trimmed my footage. What I can now do is put that footage on top of another clip. And when I come here, you'll see. Again, so our preferences. Project Let me just get rid of this. Users will know the come with all software. And there you go. You've got one clip working here, one clip working here. And of course, when you're trimming, you can trim from top to bottom or from side to side. Okay. I hope that makes sense. Just going to stop that. Again, it's something that needs to be approached with a little bit of taste, um, generally. Um, but yeah, those are those are the three key principles for trimming, for cropping, and for the magic of Ken Burns. Next thing we're going to look at is sound and affecting sound within Final Cut Pro. We'll look at some of the more complex ways of editing sound later, but the main things for you to consider are here. If you look down, all of these green clip files um, or WAV form files are, are sound. Bit of, bit of groover there for you just to uh, get, you into the, get you into the mood. Just watch what happens here. Okay, so what I've done is I've taken, I've, if you click on the line here, you can adjust and, and alter sound up, down, make it louder, make it quieter. What I've done is just as the vocal, just as the uh, introduction comes in, I've dropped the music down to minus 23, and I've also done a little bit of jiggery-pokery on the general levels of audio. If I zoom out of this, you can see that this is quite an this is quite a complex audio map. Uh, there's a lot going on, and there was a lot that needed to be done to it. But these are, uh, in very simple terms, this is the easiest way to affect sound. Just you can work in the clip, as you can see there, or you can separate sound from the clip and then work in it. Just to show you. Here's a clip with sound in it. Just hold on one second, I'll zoom in again. Here's a clip with sound in it. I've got a music, I've got a music track going on behind it. And I've got some vocal going on here. Yeah. So I didn't need to detach this, but what I do is if I if I click on the clip, come here, detach audio, that then gives me a new file. Now I can either just remove that completely or I can work on it independently. So there we go. Those are some of the generics of sound. Again, uh, Final Cut Pro really will allow you to go as far into this as your obsessions will allow you. Um, it's, it does get pretty phenomenal. Uh, for the purposes of this experiment, I just want to show you, um, I'm going to go take a clip from here, let me just get rid of the library. We're going to take a clip um, 
which is uh, a doctor explaining to a young man who's going to have to have a, uh, uh, who's going to do a physical trial, uh, some of the principles. Now I'm just going to put this onto the timeline, unprocessed. I'm going to lift it off the storyline, um, just really so that it's, so we can see it. And then we'll zoom into it. And if you take a listen, Rolling now, so just uh, five minutes uh, yeah. yeah. Right, so first thing to do is clean that up, get rid of my little bit at the front. Rolling now, so just hmm. get a little bit more on my mind. Uh, five minutes uh, right, it's quite obvious that there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of disruption in the back. Uh, we're going to get this to do, uh, we're going to get it to analyze. Um, if we get it to, well, if we get it to auto enhance, this is what we want to do it. Uh, auto enhance audio. Well, okay. It seems to think that's fine. Uh, I don't. So, background noise removal. Let's get rid of some of that uh, background noise. We'll also apply a little bit of hum removal and see what we get. Now, I think what will probably happen is the voices will sound a bit distorted. Okay. So I've just adjusted the loudness a little bit and I've also taken some of the uh, background noise removal. I'm also going to come here and on equalization remove some hum reduction here too. Now let's see. I think you can tell that's decidedly better. So there you go. That's sound enhancements. There's so much that you can do in sound. So just stop this. There's so much that you can do here. Um, hum reduction will stick with. Panning modes. Uh, you can do, um, you can create all manner of uh, surround sounds. Um, if you look at the surround panel, yeah, you can move yourself all over the place. Yeah, uh, so you know, you're looking at pretty 3D, and that's pretty groovy. You want to get enhanced, you want to get advanced, that's what you're looking at. When you're looking at a really serious um, acoustic problem, then this is this is where you're going to end up. But generally, obviously, you are trying when you're filming to, to negate as much as that's possible. The next thing for us to look at here on the timeline, uh, in the terms of getting creative, will be transitions and general effects. I've come back to the Module 1 introduction project, uh, mainly because it's just a very simplistic project. We come back over here where the creative actions are and this is the icon for transitions. Now there's lots of different transitions that, you know, they, they range from very very groovy to a little bit mind-blowing. Generally cross dissolve is a nice safe transition, uh, create transition and as you can see um, it, will, it will build for you this module will look at what goes on down here in the middle right. Again, this is pretty much where all the action happens. Okay, right, so that's uh, that's the first part. Okay, so and as, as you can see, it's a nice soft merge between two pieces of footage, as opposed to just simply. Let me just zoom in a little bit. as opposed to a, a, a quick snap from side to side. And that's transitions. Generally dissolves, cross dissolves are great. Uh, 
I quite like things like slide. Again, if you if you, you know, if you scroll about in here, it will show you the effect. So you can get an idea of what you're going to get. Let's put this in here. Creating the transition. So there it is. And there you have it. So um, that's custom. Next thing to look at are effects. Again, these are really just a matter of taste. But if you click on, click onto your clip, and then you can just, you know, you can review the effect. Have a look at broadcast save. I'm quite a fan of hard light. So if you want it, drag it on. And there it is. And it's that simple. And again, um, using effects is, is really um, a matter of taste. There are many, many effects to work through. There are also audio effects, so distortions, uh, set levels, compressors, expanders, EQs. So, you know, if you really want to get funky on the um, uh, the vocal, let's just, let's just... So let's try something with tape delay. I don't know if you're uh, familiar with a very old form of reverb, which was a... Uh, 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 a tape player. It did create some quite funky sounds. Um, so let's have a listen to my voice now. Spooky. <laughs> so yeah, there you have it. All right. Um, and if we go to Inspector, when we've added an effect, whether it's a visual effect, um, well, we're, out, we're now in audio. If you look at the top here, we've got video, we've got audio. So we've got tape delay, we've got a preset which is default. You can really, you know, when you start scratching into the surface, you can go absolutely mental with this stuff. Yeah, you can, uh, you can really, really dig deep. But the presets are pretty cool. Um, again, when we start looking at audio enhancements, we can start messing about here. Um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. We go to effects on here and we add say blue to this and go to video. So if we now have bloom here, um, we can change the color, we can change the amount, brightness and threshold. Yeah, so again, let's really, really bloom it up. Very nice, brightness, super bright, threshold. There we go. So, quite a significant difference. If we go back a little bit to how it was originally. Yeah. Let's get rid of the audio effect as well. And there you have it. Next up in visual enhancements, we're going to look a little bit more at working with text uh, with generators and themes. Again, working with module one introduction, I, uh, well, I guess I'm going to ruin a little bit of the magic um, from the production side of things. But let's take a look at, firstly, uh, text. So I click on the text icon over here. This is the, the, um, the titles and text browsers. I'm going to go with, I like, I like Assembler. So I'm going to go with this. But basically, whatever you choose, you're going to get exactly the same kind of uh, options to make. So all I do is I drag it, bring it over, decide how long I want it by selecting it, creating the length, click on it, and then come over here to Inspector. And once I'm in Inspector, I can go up here, the top title, text, and how that fits into video. So the easiest way that I find for doing this is to literally just, just click on the word you want, double click it, and it will it will give you what you need. So let's go with final, click on the next one, cut, pro, training. And all I'm doing, just clicking, double clicking on it, final cut pro training, basic level. And that's it. 
um, if I want to change the font, if I want to change the feel of the font, if I want to change the size of the font, everything is functional. I can, again, within, as long as I have the, uh, the clip, the, the text clip selected and I have a cursor over it, oops, excuse me, see now that I've moved away from it, it doesn't like it, but I can move this down here a little bit. And now I just let it run. It will be your, uh, your video guide. Before, you can just edit that. You can move it along the timeline to wherever you want it to be. And that's text. Now let's move over to generators. So if we come here onto our, uh, so I suppose the creative palette, this is where we get our generators. We have backgrounds, elements, uh, placeholders, solids, split screens. This is actually a, a, a plugin from Crumple, Prop, Crumple Pop. Um, it's really cool. I mean, you can make that with a trim. You can also make that with a trim. Uh, you can't make that with a trim. And then we've got some textures as well. I'm going to go with a texture. Let's get some grunge in. Again, as before, you just, just drag it and drop it. If you want it to be bigger, then just make it a little bit bigger and I'm going to put now my text in the grunge section I'm also because I like to be a bit of a smart ass uh, I am going to put a cross dissolve in there which will then hopefully just make a nice little transition from the text and background so we're just running it now as you can see there's generator doing its thing Rep transition. There we go. Hello, nice. Welcome to this, the first of five video tutorials. We get a nice gentle bleed into the footage. That's generators. Generators can also, just, just so you know, generators can also be put, uh, I can lift my generator from the storyline like this. I'll get rid of some of this. And now my generator is going to flow across the top of my content. I'm going to do something a little bit crazy here. This is a bit more advanced. But I'm opening up the composite screen. And I'm just going to make this about 35%. And what you'll now see, I'm just going to speed this along. What you'll now see is a, um, a lighter generator, but just... Uh -huh. At the point of transition, welcome to this, the first of five video tutorials for Final that out. Pro X. My name's Guy. I guess the best thing to do is uh, open up this bad book. Um, just clarify what we're going to cover in the course. Uh, the objectives are to develop a basic understanding of Final Cut Pro, provide you with some basic level of film and sound editing skills, and then through these quick time movie tutorials, and it's you'll be out. something for ongoing support. So that can allow you some very tasteful and gradual editing. Um, it's a little bit more advanced, but I just thought I'd show it to you while we're here. Themes, they just allow you to have a little bit more uh, consistency. So I've come over, I've come back over here into the creative palette. Um, get rid of Inspector for now. Um, I'm not really sure. I, I, as, as I say, I don't really use these guys, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go with Tribute. The generator, I'm going to put that at the start like this. Um, just zoom in. Yeah, that's a, that's a reasonably nice size. Yeah. Um, I'd like to make the transition a little bit bigger. Just to... All I did there was I double clicked and I opened up Precision Editor. Doing the, that's the easy way of doing the uh, composite function that I did. So there we have now, we now have our theme. Flow is a nice theme, um, will allow you to insert images. This is what this is doing here. So if I put this transition into my timeline, create transition, and we come here to just take a quick look. This is how the transition for this theme will work. It's just making its mind up. Uh, this is a little That's bit. the first part. There okay, we go. so we're taking a look. If you click my cursor on it, 
drop zone. It's now offering me the opportunity to put something in there. I'll just take my clip, drop it in, and what you'll now see within. That's, uh, that's the first part. Okay, so you can look at the general. I've now got a video uh, clip within a video clip. Look at so the general. Um, that's themes. Titles, again, they do. They do allow you then to create a sort of a consistency with titling. So again, let's bring in bug, which is always quite nice. And I'm going to put my bug just here, click on it, put the cursor on it like this. And then I can double click here, or I can simply type in here. I'm going to type in here. Oh, I'm not. So I just deleted it. So I'm going to double click in here instead. And I'm going to put FCP training is cool, yeah. Right, now I do need to click on it just to move it a little bit. Just sort that right, yeah. Terrible grammar. Terrible spelling. And there we go, we've got it. So now, Is this the first generator video tutorials for FCP is cool, yeah. Next. My name is Andrew Jardine. And there you go, that's themes. Again, plenty of experimentation. You can go up in the top, scroll along to see how it will look. Uh, the push, I used this in a, in a film recently. It's quite cool. And, if you... and now, last but not least, we come to um, inserting logos or icons or images. Now, the um, it's important to remember that the, the theory of resolution rates differs between film footage and between photo footage. Um, so you might find that, that when you put an image in, it's a bit hit and miss. If you are ripping something off the web, that picture is generally going to be about 72 uh, DPI dots per inch, um, and that's not going to look so hot. But let's assume that you've got a nice, um, you've got a nice image. I'm back in our introduction module. This is this is what I've found to be the simplest way to do it. Firstly, go into your iPhotos, select your picture. I like this guy, he always makes me smile. So I'm going to put him here at the start. I'm going to zoom in to where he's at. Click on him, put my cursor over it. Now I come back to the creative palette, I come to effects, and I'm looking for keying or if you're in doubt, you can just type in mask and this will give you something called image mask. There's a variety of other images. You can, you can change a variety of things. If you put it in a circle, yeah, it's going to look like that. If you put them in a big net, it looks quite artistic. But for what we're looking to achieve, image mask, mask, mask the guy up, drop it here. Okay, now looks a little bit too big. So let's just Transform our man. Easiest thing is there we go. Obviously, then you make it to the size that you want. You put it in the position that you want. And that is pretty much it. What you will then get oh, and welcome to this, the first of five. Is your logo. Now that can obviously filter, that can be through the whole of your footage. Five video. Yeah, you can, if you press Control V, you'll open up this dialog here, double click compositing, and if you want to make it really nice, you can just, I think around between sort of 30 and 45 are generally quite nice, opaque views. Um, click done, come back here, Control V, Welcome to this, the first of five video To put logos or icons, that is without a doubt the easiest, quickest way to do it.